This week on CrossFeed. Hey, you got a permit for that Bible study? A response to the murder of Dr. Taylor. Wikipedia blocks Scientologists and John Travolta. If the Mormons support it, it must be bad. <laughs> and what would Jesus do? And where would he find a lawyer? Welcome to Crossfeed Religious News. I am Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa, and pastor-elect of uh, Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in uh, North Ridgeville, Ohio. Hey, podcasting from my living room chair, this is Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, uh, pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church and newly re-elected for an unprecedented sixth term, breaking my own unprecedented fifth term record last year as secretary of the New England District. Of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, for those yeah. not aware. <laughs> well, or as I prefer to call it, the Lutheran Church of New England and the rest of the country. <laughs> yeah, they don't grow, you know, the, the, everything's big in Texas, but the egos... Those are real big out in New England. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before. And rightly, they should be. We are good in Red Sox Nation. (laughs) Well, here in Ohio, we don't have a professional, uh, any professional sports teams. And uh, Iowa, Iowa. (laughs) I keep switching that. It's going to get me in trouble. Here in Iowa, we don't have professional sports teams and. Out in the Cleveland area where we're moving, they don't really have a professional football team either, so <laughs> I was about to say they don't yeah, they don't there either, but that's okay. You can learn to cheer for the Red Sox too. It's not hard to learn. At heart I'm still a Royals fan, but I do cheer on the Red Sox as well. So you you, you can learn. It's not hard. Um no, we just I just got back uh, yesterday from our district convention, uh New England for those this is a big year for for the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate because all of us have our different districts, and we just had a, a, a positive, uplifting, exciting convention. We talked about mission and how to be involved in God's mission and where we can be involved in God's mission, and and everybody just, just was on the same page. I came back, I don't know if it happens very often, I came back from our district convention energized and excited and looking forward to ministry in the next three years uh, together in our work out here. Cool. I spent my week in boxes. <laughs> Took a couple of days off to go visit family, but uh, since we're moving quite a ways away from our families, and uh, we're pretty close to them right now, I mean, relatively. So trying to get in those family visits while it's still close before it's a eight-hour trip plus Chicago traffic. So not looking forward to that aspect. In a, in a very strange kind of situation of not looking forward to leaving uh, because I've got such great people here, um, but at the same time uh, excited about just, you know, all the new stuff. And and uh, so it's uh, it's want to go but don't want to go. Well, it's just a weird time, too, because you can't really start anything new, and yet you're just tying up loose ends and... It's a grieving time, and it gets old real quick, and that's why I, I always try to be out of there in, in a month. Uh, it, our, our practice out here is, you know, once once you've accepted a call, um, you know, the DP meets with the uh, elders and stuff, but you really don't even attend those meetings anymore because, you know, other than just kind of wrap things up. So, uh, but yeah, I think I had one wrap up meeting. That was it. Uh, but, uh, you know, after that, I was just kind of out the door because although I stayed around for six weeks because it was, um, I accepted the call to be out here to St. Luke's just before Lent. And so I stayed through Easter. And I'm going to tell you, it, by the by the Sunday after Easter, it was dragging. I was yeah. ready to. It's, you know, just because of that, yeah, it's, it's sort of like, all right, let's just get this over with already, you know. Um, but. We wanted to stick around. Um, well, for one thing, I mean, the biggest thing at this point is 
we're having a hard time nailing down movers and stuff. It's just there's a couple of companies that we've ruled out just because they said, yeah, we'll get back to you, and they never did. So hmm. trying to chase them down, and, you know, one of them acted like we were imposing on them, and, you know, when all we were trying to do was, you know, get a quote or get someone to come to a walkthrough or something like that, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, if it's a problem, don't worry. It's fine. We'll go somewhere else, you know. So I said, obviously, you people don't have a problem with recession. Plenty of work for you. We'll yeah. find somebody else who, who needs it. Yeah. Um, but hey, here's the question, man. Do you need a permit to move that stuff? <laughs> uh, you know, I think that's the one thing that um, we've been kind of joking about North Ridgeville because you need a permit for everything. I mean, like, you want to light a fire in your fireplace, you need a permit for it. <laughs> we have we had a pool here, and, um, and you know, the kids are asking, can we have one there? Well, if we wanted one there, we need a permit for the pool. We need, uh, um, if it's over a certain uh, height, then uh, you need a, a fence, and so you need a permit for the fence. And because the ground isn't level there, um, we would also need another permit to level the ground. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't think we're going to have a pool. <laughs> There's enough local pools, you know, in the Cleveland suburbs that uh, we can just go to one of those instead. But do you need so, a permit for the Bible study? You know, I, I don't think so. But apparently in San Diego, you might. You might. Well, now, this is an interesting – well, go ahead and you do the story. Then uh, I'm going to – I followed this up on Snopes and a couple other th places too. So I, I want to do some uh, kind of different comments on it. Okay. All right. So we've got – it's actually – it's kind of a preliminary story and then a follow-up story. Uh, it's Pastor David Jones and his wife Mary in um, San Diego, and it's uh, South Bay Community Church. And basically it – once you kind of cut through everything, it works out something like this. He was having Bible studies in his home, and it was creating a lot of traffic congestion. Here in Delaware, traffic congestion is two cars. <laughs> but there, I take it, it's a little bit more. I, I don't know how many people he was actually having in his home. And so uh, they received a written warning that cited unlawful use of land ordering them to either stop religious assembly or apply for a major use permit, and um, which that could cost them thousands of dollars uh, to, as they put it, just have a few friends over. Um, since then, the... Um, they are... Now they're saying, now you don't need to get the permit to continue the meetings. Uh but uh, the pastor is looking for an apology. He wants a decision inked on paper. He says, we don't have anything in writing. We want something very clearly that states people can pray in homes and have friends over and read the Bible together and study a bit. So it's a, it's a land issue. They're basically, basically saying, look, you've got a large uh, group coming there. It's zoned as a residential place, not as a church. And so it's a zoning problem. Now uh, let's be reasonable. So right, um, yeah. Uh, uh, um, one of the issues that happened was that a car that belonged to a visitor of one of their neighbors was dinged by somebody in the Bible study group, and it also the pastor paid for that damage, and that mishap triggered a complaint to the local officials, and uh, um. Uh, you know, this the a guy who the enforcement officer said, well, this because uh, of the size of the group um, was a religious assembly, and therefore they would need to have a, um, a permit. And um, then at the end of last month, the county officials overturned the warning and uh, said the use code governing what constitutes religious assembly was not specific, and the Jones could continue doing it. So they, they decided uh, um, religious assembly under county land use code is defined as religious services involving public assemblies such as customarily occurs in synagogues, temples, and churches. Uh, 
Right. And says it probably needs some more um, theory. Uh, the uh, chief administrative officer of the county said, um, I wanted to say in the ex- most direct terms, the county has never tried to stifle religious expression, never will. Um, the county responded to complaints from a neighbor about traffic and parking issues resulting from weekly Bible study held in a Bonita home. This is a land use issue. It's not a religious expression. We have been working to resolve the matter with a property owner. And uh, he, I deeply regret that a routine code enforcement issue is transformed to a debate over religious freedom. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I, I see a couple. Number one, I think for him to ask for an apology is, is a little bit from, from, from the code enforcement. OK, the guy made a mistake. Let it go. Mm hmm. But even more important, when you think about it, a conflict comes, and there is you know these attack responses. You know I'm going to attack this other side. One of the ways to do it is litigation. Well, here we have a perfect example of an attack response of litigation. Right? Okay, this guy gets dinged. The pastor pays for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, rather than say, okay, can we do something? Look, you know, we're trying, you know, it's trying to park in here with all these cars coming over. It's kind of like trying to drive through a pinball machine here. Uh, can we work out some place for you guys to park so that it's not all over the street here? I mean, was there a public school within, you know, shooting distance that they could go use their, you know, that empty parking lot? Or is, you know, is there something like that that could have been worked out? Uh, was before going out and calling the county after the the pastor and his wife. We can resolve our differences peacefully. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of on both sides. There's, I mean, especially given that he paid, the pastor paid for the, you know, to get the ding repaired. I mean, I go, okay, fine. You know, and if it was, if it was a problem, yeah, to work something out like that. I don't know. This is, this, this follow-up article actually says that the pastor was talking about this in his sermon. That kind of from the article, it sounds kind of like it was the subject of his sermon. I'm like, don't you have more important things to preach about on Trinity Sunday? Or well, this would be last week, so on Pentecost, you know. <laughs> so I, you know, it, it, I think that it, it's important for the church when someone, someone wrongs the church, and then they or some perceive that way at least. You could, argue, you could argue about it was just it was just it was, just, it was, it was, it was, it was a mistake you know you know yeah, I, apologize. I apologize isn't it isn't it church's, church's job, job to say, say you're forgiven, you're forgiven. and not say not say I want that apology in writing <laughs> right well I guess the other thing that strikes me about this too is I, I think they're being a bit disingenuous when they said well we're just having a few friends over yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking that if there that just happens, you, know, you know, if there's just if there's three just or four cars, or if this is, just, you know, if this is just a small group Bible study in the sense of, you know, a dozen people or less, I can't imagine that causing a huge sort of zoning problem. Um, you know, I'd really like to know how many people are actually attending this. Right. But, I mean, it's, it's not a zoning problem. It's just probably a... We got to figure out what to do with these cars that are there. I mean, I, I think I read somewhere like fifteen people. You're I mean, using I mean, a lot okay. Stop, stop your. Um, I, where was I in my comment there? Um, senior moment here. This morning, in the middle of doing the uh, words of institution, all of a sudden I forgot some of them. <laughs> senior moment hit just all it was. I'm not even fifty yet. Anyway, so uh, but the you know if it, if it was you know if it's 15 people, you know, I can tell you, on my neighborhood, if I had 15 people over at the house, uh, that would be very crowded on our road, you know, because that could be seven, eight cars. And, yeah, that could be quite a bit of, you know, to have to work around that, depending on, on, on what the road is like, how wide they are. And, you know, if you got all everybody else's cars there, too, yeah, I could see that being a bit of a problem. Especially if it's a weekly thing, you know. Mm-hmm. This is a regular It's not just like... Uh, you know, oh, it's uh, somebody's birthday or something, and the whole family's there, you know, for the occasion. You know, but it's if this is an ongoing mm-hmm. weekly thing, yeah, it, you know, it's important for 
it's important for churches to work with their communities, you mm-hmm. know, and make sure that they're not stepping on toes. It just doesn't do well uh, for the, you know, for the church, for, for building relationships. And one of the important things about those bio, those home-based Bible studies a lot of times is that it is to build relationships. A lot of people may not be willing to come to a church, but they would be willing to come to a local Bible study. So you want to really keep those things on good terms with the people. Mm-hmm. So, um, oh, let's see here. But, you know, the nice thing about getting the news here is uh, at least we're able to get it. Uh, we didn't have anybody editing the pages. <laughs> okay. Oh man, that was a bad segue. Yeah, but we try, we awful. try. That's we're we're gonna dock Jim's pay for that one. You know, well, I could say nobody's at least nobody's suing about it. I was actually leaning toward that one, at least talking about litigation there. Okay, let's go for that one. Okay. We'll, 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 let's figure out what they do with Wikipedia later. Um, <laughs> okay, talking about attack responses with litigation. Um, and absolutely frivolous. There never was much hope. Um, Just a fool's hope. Okay. You want to share the story? Go ahead. You share it. Okay. I, I had a laugh. One. Okay. This is, there's a Minnesota couple, uh, Sarah and Mark Neal in Becker, Minnesota. Uh, they received uh, three letters from Bullseye Collection Agency. With And so this is, uh, you know, a, a collection agency, obviously. Um, but they they got these letters from them. And... And and they weren't offended that they got letters, you know, collecting on bills. They were offended that the letters WWJD uh, were printed in the upper right hand corner. <laughs> you know, what would Jesus do? And so they're saying, oh, this um, portrays the debtor as a sinner who is going to hell. You know, what would Jesus do? He would pay his debts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, that was my- well, would Jesus? He wouldn't be a dead man like you people. <laughs> so, um, the uh, the lawyer Jesus for the Christ Repo Man. <laughs> yeah, right. can you, you know, can you just imagine Jesus knocking on somebody's door? And going, I'm here to collect. <laughs> but, you don't want to make him mad, you know. <laughs> but uh, the. <laughs> The uh, lawyer uh, representing the uh, collection agency says the phrase simply means the company adopts Christian principles. And I I didn't get this. He says, it's not like it's a fish symbol or a specific Christian statement. It can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. WWJD. You know, I I think it is actually a a specific Christian symbol. Um, Yeah, I know. But, you know... how you interpret it as far as, um, you know, I, I think it, it nowadays it means about the same as a fish to most people, you know. Uh, so anyhow, what it says, is, yeah, it, it makes you invoke shame and guilt, portrays the debtor as a sinner who's going to hell, and thus it violates, violates the Fair Debt Collection Act, Practices Act, which outlaws abusive or harassing collection tactics. Now, under what... On what planet could that statement be considered abusive or harassing? <laughs> it's four letters. <laughs> I mean, if especially especially if it's, it's not you're not trying to be abusive or harassing, right? Yeah, because it you know because you you look at it, it could be, and this is what the company is saying. It's more of a we're going to treat you nicely because Jesus would treat you nicely. And in fact, you know, you think, what did Jesus say? You know, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, you know. Not that they're going to forgive your debts because they're a collection agency. <laughs> they're really not about but, forgiveness, which makes it kind of odd to me that, that they would even use that expression, you know, as, as on their letterhead or whatever. <laughs> like, do you really want us to answer that question? He forgive the debt. That's right. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, that, I, I, I just don't think I put a statement or a fish on a, I don't know, the fish on the collection agency letterhead. Just the, it seems some kind of odd to me, you know. I'm yeah. not saying there can't be Christian bill collectors, but you know, it's just, 
on the other hand, it strikes me though, this is when this opportunity where a fence is not I have the right not to be offended. Mm-hmm. You know, and even though the connect this is not abusive. This is not harassing. This is not calling someone up at three in the morning. This is not going to somebody's work and demanding money. This is four letters on a letter. Four, four, yeah, four letters printed on a letter. Uh, that's all it is. But no, I, I'm, I'm saying this is what you're, you, you're intending by this, and it offends me, and therefore I'm going to sue you. I mean, I, and and I can't understand why this this uh, uh, this is the judge denied a motion just to dismiss the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. that kind of struck me too. Like, is yeah. the judge trying to get some publicity or something? Cause I don't know. I, I mean, this just seems like, oh, come on. Talk about frivolous lawsuits. All right. And if they'd had any, I mean, if I was them and, and this guy's soup, I'd counter soup for, for, for all legal costs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would. I, I would I would counter soup because, I mean, this is just nonsense. You know, sorry, didn't mean to offend you. I'll send you a new letter without those letters on it. How's that sound? Yeah. It's not our letter hit though, so I'll have to white it out. <laughs> Don't scratch yeah, off you know, the white out. <laughs> I'll scan the letter and pl- send it to you on plain paper. You know, white paper and black ink, okay? Or you find that offensive? Yeah. You know, but you know, not everything's black and white in this world. <laughs> okay. You need so to we'll send it in shades you. of gray. <laughs> Get used to disappointment. I was thinking since they're but since these people aren't dead, I'd send it to them in the red. I'd send it to them in red. <laughs> Ready? Uh, <laughs> you know. So you know. Um, but <sighs> yeah, this is silliness. I get tired of silliness. I really do. I just I, I have no use for for what I call frivolous silly lawsuits. Um, and I I would hope that the judge, you know winds up uh, uh, finding the lawyer for uh, frivolous lawsuits. Yeah, then they'll owe even more. Well, no, the judge, uh, the, the lawyer will, because the lawyer has to pay that fee. fine. Oh, okay. Because he's the guy doing it. Uh, yeah, now let's head over there to Wikipedia. All right. Speaking of people who like to sue, because, <laughs> you know, Scientologists are known for suing there for a long time. Wikipedia has um, blocked them. We should flee in terror. Yes, that would be the wisest course. Completely. Yep. Um, they've decided to block Scientology-affiliated computers from changing items on any part of the free online encyclopedia. Uh, so basically, the the IP addresses, which is, you know, when you're online, you think you're anonymous, you're not. You have an address that you're coming from. It's like a caller ID kind of thing. They can track you down. There are ways to get around that. Um, you can spoof your IP address. It's actually pretty easy. Um, I haven't done it, but there are um, services out there that'll do it for you, and uh, and for free. But um, they have the problem was they had been repeatedly changing more than 400 pages related to the church, deleting negative references and adding positive ones. The volume of changes was overwhelming administrators' ability to reverse them, hence the block. In other words, they were spamming Wikipedia. They were trying to, you know, they were they were going through and trying to make themselves look good by deleting any kind of negative reference to them. Any questions about whether they're a cult or not? <laughs> he will join us or die. So, um. Wow. I mean, boy, that should just throw up all kinds of red flags when they've got, um, you know, 400 different pages. It's not just like they, you know, removed one reference that they thought was really kind of, um, you know, inappropriate or, or uh, you know, not based on fact or whatever. You know, maybe I could understand if there was a link to an article that was a heavily biased article and... And they felt like, you know, this really isn't a, you know, a fair representation of the facts. But this was 400 different pages that they were editing. Right. And, and there are some pages um, 
I came across one and uh, about someone I said, man, you know, I don't know who wrote that, but I mean, it was, you know, basically the, the, the person they were writing about was the devil incarnate by the time you were done with it. I mean, and, and so a friend of mine and I went through and, and changed it, uh, moderating the, the guy's language, taking out some very uh, biased, very pejorative language. Uh, you know, so, I mean, it was... Uh, uh, but, you know, that's... But, yeah, 400 pages, and then every negative comment was taken out and placed with something positive. Yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry, now, but... there's... <clears throat> yeah, that's... That's, to me, that's the definition of a cult. You know, we can't have any bad PR. If people are saying bad things about us, we'll just pretend it never happened. That's right. Um, well, it's not only that we're going to pretend it never happened, we're going to change it. You know, we're going to keep that bad, you know, negative comments from, from being made and, and being published and... Um, so I, I, kudos to Wikipedia saying, no, we've had enough of this. This is, this is silliness. Yeah. You know, you know that it's pretty bad when Wikipedia bans you. I mean, you know, they do have editors and they, they try to clean up problems and, you know, and things like that. Um, you know, and, and I did hear about a study not all that long ago that where they found, uh, as far as accuracy goes, um, it had the same in the a sampling of of different articles. It had the same number of of factual errors as Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, so you know, I I find Wikipedia I find Wikipedia useful for sort of current events and um, wondering about a particular cultural phenomenon or something like that. Um, you know, I wouldn't use it, and you know, professors won't let you use it for if you're writing a. Um, you know, any kind of academic work or, or something like that. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's helpful if you want to know, you know, when, uh, and, and we're not doing the story on this, but the, um, ah, no, I'm drawing a blank again. Um, the new Supreme court justice, what's her name? This will be a night to remember. Santa Meyer. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, and so um, <clears throat> I went and looked her up, you know, just to find out who she is and stuff like that. I didn't really know much about her, so it's it's useful for that. But, you know, because anybody can edit it, you know, once in a while you get inaccuracies. Um, but when uh, when they decide to block you, boy, that's, that's pretty heavy. There's... Uh, you know, it lists, I think there's a half a day in January 08, the entire nation of Qatar was blocked because many troublesome edits were coming from the country's only ISP. <laughs> so, like, there's just a couple other incidents where they had a block, you know, a, a huge group of people. Uh, Overstock.com was another one that, um, that got blocked. But, uh, so, yeah, you, you know that you're, you've got problems if Wikipedia is blocking you blocking your entire organization. So, which wouldn't stop them from going down to the mall and and or library and grabbing a computer there and doing the edits from there. They just can't do it from their office. Aren't you wired? Online? Surfing the web? HTML, good buddy. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's let 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 let's say uh, and George Tiller for the last, uh, and, let, and let's deal with the Mormons are coming. The Mormons are coming. Speaking of bad Block PR and cults, <laughs> Block the doors. This is. I find myself siding with the Mormons on this one. You, you too, huh? Yep. Every once in a while that happens. Uh, not real often, but. Well, this goes back to our good old friend Proposition Eight out in California. And uh, the banning of same-sex marriage by it, which, which, by the way, if you haven't heard, the California Supreme Court did uphold that they've got every right to change their constitution 
Uh, and uh, though marriage is done up to that point where grandfathered in, it's no longer uh, legal. Same sex marriage is no longer legal in uh, in California. Although um, now they're going to federal court with it. So I don't know what they're how they can argue it in federal court unless they're finally coming going to argue the defense of uh, the uh, 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 number one because of the uh, Defense of Marriage Act and. Number two, uh, unless they're going to argue under the equal uh, full faith and um, recognition clause, I think it is, of the Constitution. But anyway, so one of the things uh, that they're doing is they are really uh, uh, um, kind of uh, going after particularly the Mormons. They're, they're not going after um, – well, they are going after other churches too – but they really do uh, um, um, going particularly after uh, the Mormon Church because they're big. They've got a lot of uh, money. They've got a lot of uh, stuff to pull, and so and people generally think they're a little odd. Yep. So this is a specifically a group called Californians Against Hate, and uh, they realize that there's not a whole lot they can do in California at this point, uh, but they're trying to promote uh, same-sex marriage in other states like we have here in Iowa, um, but we don't have in Ohio so <laughs> yet. Um, but uh, Jim, of course, has had it for a long time, um, not in his church, but in his state. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you have Maine, and, you know, this, it seems like every day you turn on the TV and there's another state that's either moving in that direction or or just past a... Um, a bill or, or uh, had a Supreme Court decision or something um, allowing it. And so what, basically what they're saying is Mormons are against gay marriage. You're not like the Mormons, are you? You know, it's, it's sort of a guilt by association kind of thing. Well, it's even worse than that. Uh, they one of the ads said, "The Mormons are coming. The Mormons are coming." You know, uh, um, and it was rejected um, by uh, um, uh, sites, uh, websites, and newspapers. Uh, yeah, there was for a newspaper website, and uh, the Kennebec Journal in Maine uh, said, "You know, the, the, this this this." Add borders on insulting and degenerating a whole set of people based on their religion. I mean, just the end of it. Yeah, they said, I'm not intending it to harm the religion. I think they do wonderful things. Nicest people. This is um, Fred Carger uh, from Californians Against Hate. My single goal is to get them out of the same-sex marriage business and back to helping hurricane victims. Yeah. Yeah, in other words, don't have... Uh, uh, a um, don't have any kind of uh, you know a church should have no, no kind of opinion about anything. If they think everything's wrong, they should just keep their mouth shut and just go do whatever they're supposed to do. Um, this is also, by the way, the same group that did that ad that we talked about a while ago with two Mormon missionaries showing up the door, lesbian couples' door, ripping up their marriage certificate. You know. I, all they needed was the you know the the pitchfork and the the torch you know to mm-hmm. be doing this stuff and and interesting it said um, and and the one that produced that one said we have zero interest in demonizing anybody who believes in any religion yeah oh get real uh, <laughs> matter of fact another uh, political consultant um uh what was his name uh, uh Last name is Lawrence. I can't remember his first name. Um, who had actually organized Mormons to go out and knock on doors and stuff. Uh, he simply said, uh, this is political consulting 101. You, it's demonizing the opposition. This is uh, Gary Lawrence, author of Gary How Lawrence. Americans View Mormonism, Seven Steps to Improve Our Image. Yeah, but, yeah. And he's right. I mean, you... Uh, um, you to a certain extent you do demonize the opposition. Uh, the you know talk about Supreme Court, 
the the uh, Democrats did it with John Roberts and Sam Alito pulling out stuff from you know when they were first year in college, uh, you know all sorts of weird off the wall stuff, and now the the right is doing it with Sonia Sada Sonemeyer, you know, um, again pulling out you know comments that she's made and uh, you know highlighting them and and putting the best worst construction on it. Um, I mean that's that's you know, you know that that's what it is. You you demonize the opposition and you you know you don't argue the fact because they yeah. know they can't win the fact because if they could win the fact, you know, up, you know for for all they're talking about it, the reality is opponents were outspent. I did not know that. Yep. The only thing the opponents had on their side was the number of people who went to the polls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you notice they're going after the Mormons. They're not going after the black churches that had a bigger influence and bigger number of people at the polls um, voting against gay marriage than the Mormons. Because really, there's, I mean, yeah, there's more Mormons out west, but uh, it's you know, it's not like the Mormons were the only ones in favor. Of uh, of Proposition Eight, but you can't demonize black churches. <laughs> no. Nope. So that would work against them. So oh, well, we're just gonna um, we're just gonna say oh, you're just like the Mormons. So yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, I and the thing is, the problem, the biggest problem that I see with this is this kind of stuff actually works. I mean. I, I see this stuff and I go, oh, how ridiculous. How stupid is that? You know, this is, you know, anybody with half a brain should be able to see through this and go, wow, this is just being really mean to Mormons and really has nothing to do with the actual issue. But the problem is people see it and they swallow it hook, line and sinker. And like, all right, America, wake up, you know, think for yourselves. Stop, you know. Don't stop getting your your morals from banner ads on websites. Yeah. Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. So unless yep. you're trying to you know hit the woodchuck or something like that, you know, with the little flash ad, that's fine. You can do that. So, ugh. kudos to the Mormons. I <laughs> don't like their theology, but I. Uh, they're, I, I have to side with them on this one. It's just, they're being treated unfairly. And, uh, you know, let's, if we're going to discuss the issue, let's discuss the issue honestly, openly, and, you know, without setting up straw men and all kinds of stuff like that. So, let's move on to, we should have done this one first and gotten it over with, but, oh well. Well, I thought we would just end on a very depressing note tonight. <laughs> Um, no, very, um, sad situation, of course, happened last Sunday, and, uh, I mentioned to Dale right afterwards, we're going to have to talk about this next week, uh, George Tiller, who, uh, very well known, uh, uh, one of the handful of, um, doctors who performed abortion who does it in the last trimester, um was uh, uh uh now if i understand it correctly he actually was an excommunicated member of an lcms church that i uh, didn't know that i yeah i've seen it said at a couple of places i i haven't got any proof of that but the american lutheran publicity bureau board somebody mentions it okay so, so uh, if somebody can verify that that would be helpful yeah yeah, please let us know uh, uh, if you can. Pod, pet, podcast at crossfeednews dot com. Anyway, uh, but was a member of Reformation Lutheran Church, an ELCA congregation in uh, Wichita. And the um, last Sunday, of course, as you know, somebody came into the church and murdered him. Just killed him in cold blood. Now. Um, 
before you know, which before we get into his um, talking about him personally, Dale and I absolutely uh, uh, condemn that action. Mm-hmm. It is we uh, do not have the right to um, you know ec- you know c- give that kind of punishment. You know, we both would believe that God gives the the government the right. To take a life, but never does God give the individual the right. No, and you can't. So, you can't call yourself pro-life and then go murder somebody. Right. So that's although some people would say, "Look, you know, hey, he, he was a, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> and and he was, um, you know, very well known, uh, um, <laughs> or yeah, infamous." Uh, because he had his his clinic was where Operation Rescue um, had done a couple of um, events, and I guess Bill O'Reilly on his show on Fox News uh, would go after him every now and then. Though I've never watched the show, so I couldn't tell you. But I do it more from from Operation Re- Rescue and Randall Terry. And Randall Terry, by the way, did, was did not condemn the, the guy who shot him. I thought that was interesting. Hmm. But. This is, to my mind, just um, well. What he did was sinful. This is tragic. Yeah, the ends don't justify the means. I mean, Never. you know, you, you you know, you could argue, oh well, this is going to save a lot of lives. That may be true. It might. I mean, you know, it probably is. All right, um, because it's going to make it that much more difficult for. Um, for women to get abortions, especially late, um, you know, third trimester abortions. And if you believe that life begins at conception, and we do, then, um, yeah, it's going to save a lot of lives. Does that make it right, though? Absolutely not. That's it. And, and, you know, honestly, if you look at this as far as the, um, the cause, the, the, the pro-life cause, all this does is give the uh, pro-choice movement a, um, you know, say, oh, that's what all those anti-abortion people, you know, they're all killers and they're hypocrites and all this kind of stuff. Because, of course, you know, there's the whole tendency to paint um, uh, an entire group of people with the same brush, you know. Now, thankfully, I've talked to, um, in the past week, uh, quite a few uh pro-choice, pro-abortion, whatever term you want to use, people, right? And guess what? None of them have said, yeah, that's what, that's what uh, you know, pro-life people are about. Uh, thankfully, they recognize that no, you know, every single um, pro-life organization out there has you know, openly condemned this action and said, this is absolutely wrong. I, um, next day I got a, a email from Lutherans for life and, um, you know, just, you know, very strongly condemning this action. And, um, so I, I think it was good that that came out, you know, at the same time we got, there was a comment on this story at crossfeednews.com and I, all comments are moderated. I don't, um, I, because we've had a problem with spamming, I've, I've set it to, um, to moderate all comments before they get posted. Um, I let this one go through because I, I think people have the, the right to express their opinion. I was kind of hoping that somebody else would respond to it and say, you're off your rocker. Um, but I'm responding to it now. Um, but, but his comment, and, and I'll read it because this is, this really saddened me. Uh, he said, and this is an anonymous comment. I do not feel bad that Mr. Tiller was murdered. It is my understanding that in his lifetime he murdered over 60,000 babies. How can anyone feel bad that a man like this um, is himself murdered? I am only sorry he wasn't killed sooner before he could kill all the babies he did. And I do sympathize with a single-slash-divorced woman who already has a lot of children and can't possibly care for another one and work full-time too. But have the abortion at two to three months and then have your tubes cut and never get pregnant again. But to have your baby killed as it is being born, incomprehensible. So that didn't make any sense either. 
He's saying, well, yeah, abortion's okay as long as it's in the first trimester. But then he's saying that, he's saying, it, you know, because look at, look at the hypocrisy here. It's not okay to kill a baby, you know, regardless of, of whether you believe, you know, where you sort of draw the line, okay? But then you say, it's not okay to kill, you know, these babies, but it is okay to go out and kill this doctor. I'm sorry, that's hypocrisy. You're either pro-life or you're not. When will this insanity end? I think there's some issues here. You know, yeah, I agree. You know, I, I think he's wrong um, on a number of issues. I mean, I don't feel bad about this, but that, you know. There are some extreme cases that I can understand. Um, you know, and, and I'm probably... Uh, again, I struggle with those things, but that's a very narrow part. Um, but you know, the where I, I do, I think I can understand where it's coming from, is that these were often late, you know, late third trimester abortions. He's only one of the handful of doctors in the country who even does them, and you know, I mean, at this point you're. You, I had one um one of my 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 daughter was born at 36 weeks and my older son was born at 32. So we ne- we never made the whole 40 week pregnancy thing, you know. We we don't know what that what that's like. No, we never made it to that ninth month. That's a very foreign thing for us uh for my wife and I. And but yet thinking that these two children who are, you know, in 85, we were told our son, the survival rate at 32 weeks was 85, 90%. And our daughter, we were told, oh, other than John, this is 100%. Yeah, you, you, you know, she'll probably have some John, she'll probably have some issues to deal with things, but yeah, it's time, you know, she's fine. You know, she, she just needs to grow. Um, my son, they said the big three issues were, were lung development, um, immunization d- development, and the ability to suck. Well, he was on room air right away. He was on, um, so the lungs were fully developed. They had to give him IVs to, to, of antibiotics to deal with uh, any infections. And uh, it took him another week or so before the sucking kicked in. So they had to put a tube down his stomach and, you know, feed him through a tube. You know, but here, so, so, but, you know, and, there, my son was thirty-two weeks, perfectly, perfectly fine. He would live, and yet I and I sat there. I remember in in the NICU thinking he could have been aborted. Mm-hmm. You know, fully functioning, nothing wrong, kid. And but if a woman said, "I, I," you know, and and that's really it, just hit me. Now, and if it's in the case of uh, you know the health, the, the 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 life of the mother, obviously, um, you know you're dealing talking a lesser two evils. Ooh, lightning behind you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if it's an issue of um, even really, you know, I could even understand possibly the physical health of the mother. You know, um, up here there was a twelve year old girl uh, who was pregnant. Um, you know, I mean, that, I mean, it just, uh, you know, you just think how sad, sad that even is. Um, obviously, I think in a case like that, yeah, you could understand this. This, this. this child's barely even begun adolescence. You know, I don't know any of the details, of, of, you know, uh, but yeah, I can understand. I mean, this, this really, that could take her life. Mm. So, but, but otherwise, though, I mean, or, you know, could seriously damage her health. But um, otherwise, I, it's just too common. And um, but that doesn't make what happened to Doctor Tiller right. It was absolutely wrong. Hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, the this uh, you know, if this number is accurate, sixty thousand babies. You know, I, I mean, it really it, it makes Ted Bundy look like a humanitarian. All right. But you know what? I don't believe that. Uh, you know that. A lynch mob on Ted Bundy would be right either, you know. 
I mean, and that's just the way it is. As as Christians, we are called to honor the government, even if we disagree with the government. And I disagree vehemently with our government about this issue. I think, I mean, it just, it sickens me. It disgusts me. At the same time, it doesn't give me the right to go out and murder somebody. Right. To their credit, by the way, every pro-life agency, except Operation Rescue and Randall Terry. Actually, the current director of Operation Rescue also condemned it. Uh, Randall Terry did not, though. But they all, every one of them condemned this and said this was absolutely wrong. In contrast, by the way, the next morning, of course, we had the uh, Army recruiter shot. I'm still waiting for Code Pink to stand up and say this was absolutely wrong. You know, they shouldn't take the, the law into their own hands. But I think I'm not going to hold my breath waiting for that for that to happen. But yeah, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? So okay, well, with that little thing said there, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, when we knew why we were in Springfield, the uh, Democratic Party of Massachusetts was having its um, uh, convention, and we have we just we just set a record in Massachusetts. We've now had the third Democratic Speaker of the House. In a row, indicted on federal fraud charges. <laughs> Ooh, there's something to be proud of. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I was riding down the elevator, and this woman had this Obama sticker on button, and this t- together we can. That was Devil Patrick's thing. I said, "So, are you guys going to go for number four now?" <laughs> I really, I really wanted to say that, but I just kept my mouth shut. <laughs> It's time we face up to the unface up to a boo. So <laughs> that's uh, that's all of our uh, stories this week. Um, and our prayers go out. And, and please pray for uh, this Dr. Tiller's family, the people of his congregation, the, you know, the people that love him. And, um, and, and you know what? Pray for the other abortion doctors out there. All right. Our job as Christians is not to go around killing them. Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. All right? Pray for them. Pray that God would lead them to repentance. But also pray for this family because they're really struggling and they need to know that um, that God loves them. And, and that, I mean, this guy, and, and this is the amazing thing about the grace of God, that this guy wasn't doing this to thumb his nose at God. He really believed, and I think very wrongly, but he really believed that he was doing right, that he was helping people. All right? This guy was a Christian. And you go, well, how can you be a Christian, you know, with, with this and, and doing this? Well, you know what? You can be a Christian and have all kinds of messed up beliefs. Right? But by all indications, he believed like that Jesus Dale. was his Savior. <laughs> so, you know, so I, you know, this, you know, you get these questions of, uh, you know, well, if, if Hitler repented on his deathbed, would he be in heaven and stuff like that? And the answer is yes. And, you know, with this guy, assuming that he was a Christian, do, do I believe that, that he's in heaven? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Do I think that his sin was horrible and heinous? Yeah. Absolutely. But there's but, the grace of God. By the way, um, yeah, also pray for the Lutherans in uh, Kansas, especially in Wichita. I mean, you think they've had this, and then they had the BTK killer was the president of a Lutheran church down there. Uh, they've 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 gotten it tough, yeah. and so uh, you know, just just uh, pray for them. Uh, so, well, that brings us to another. Maybe you got more comments. Maybe you got more thoughts. Maybe you want to be see the the, the, the new speaker of the house in Massachusetts uh, deposed on fraud charges, and so you can have four in a row. Uh, let us know. Podcast at crossfeednews dot com. Or I got a really amazing phone call completely out of the blue this week. A um, few weeks ago, we did a uh, story on Maury Davis. He's a, a pastor in, uh, was he in Nashville now? Um, he was in Dallas. This, this is the guy that, um, that before he was a Christian, he murdered a woman in cold blood, went to prison, got let out early because of prison overcrowding. Um, but also be- 
I mean, he had become a Christian and repented, and and now he's a pastor at a mega church, right? Well, he called me um, at my office. You know, that's the other thing. If you ever want to, you know, really get a hold of us, since we announced at the beginning of the show uh, the churches that we're at, it's not that tough to track us down. You know, he just Googled me. And, um, boy, we talked for half hour, 45 minutes or something like that. Nice guy. Um, but, you know, he said, uh, I wanted to clear some things up. Um, because that article, and, and we mentioned this, um, and he noted that we mentioned this, um, you know, we didn't, weren't sure how much of this was actually true. And, you know, he said this sort of, this thing sort of painted him as this, you know, he said, yes, I have a nice house. Okay. Um, but he said, I don't have a swimming pool. I don't have, you know, all the stuff that he claimed that I did. Uh, that stuff was just flat out lies. Um, he said that uh, at his church, um, he has a board of directors that, um, that, and they make the decisions about hiring and firing him. And he has told them that, um, once he, uh, you know, if, if for, if, if they believe that, he is not doing what he needs to be doing as a pastor, that they have the right to fire him. Now we in the as Lutherans understand that a little bit differently, but his point was that he didn't want to be, it didn't, he didn't want that church to be his empire. And I have to respect him for that. Um, you know, he didn't want to be in charge of things. He, um, he does not make the decisions about his salary and all that kind of stuff. And, but he also talked about this whole, um, sort of testimony about God's grace in spite of, of his sin. Now, he used to be a pastor in Dallas and, um, he, because of this rather large church that um, that he was the pastor of, uh, he ended up uh, through some connections. Uh, uh, he got called up by a TV station, station that wanted him to, to do uh, like a weekly like Bible, Bible, Bible study kind of, kind of thing. And so, and so, he's like, oh, sure, sure. And so, and so he started doing that, that. and and um, you um, know, when the the, 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 the new station stations would want to have an interview about something, they call called him, they called him up, and he's on TV, and his face is showing up on the awards and things like that. And and he found out that the this woman's family was very upset. And he said, you know, I don't want want them to be upset about me. And so, and so that's, that's when he basically just closed up shop in Dallas and moved to Nashville, Nashville because he wanted to get away from his family so that his presence would not be a hurtful thing to them. And so, I mean, boy, that takes a lot. You know, he could have just said, you know, you're Christians, you ought to forgive me. But he didn't. You know, he recognized that he had severely hurt them. And, uh, and he made no excuses about it. And... Um, you know, he, he felt horrible about it, but he said, as he told me, he said, you know, if you steal someone's car, you can go buy him another car. But there was nothing I could do to bring their mother back. And, um, you know, and I knew that. And so he, he moved, he got away from them and, and he hoped that he could, you know, continue doing ministry without them uh, being hurt. But he's at a big church, you know, and they're still hurting. And so he has actually, when whenever he sort of gives his testimony about God's grace, he does not talk about that event anymore because he doesn't want it to be. He says, you know, and when I when I did give my testimony, I included that. That was just a tiny little part of it. Um, you know, it was kind of a little introduction, and then he'd go off talking about God's grace, and um, and he said, no, I've removed that part completely, and I don't even talk about it anymore. And, but, you know, and he said that he's many times had, you know, the, the press, um, just saying all kinds of nasty things about him and stuff like that. And, but he actually felt, he said, I, I feel like I could actually talk to you guys and, um, and that you'd be willing to listen and, um, you know, and, and at least hear me out. And so I really appreciated that. And, um, so it was, it was just, it was really neat. And I have, um, I have a lot of respect for him. And I, and I really appreciate that feedback. So we would love to hear from all of you, um, even if you don't have a shady background. And, um, you know, tell us what you think. Jim, you're muted. Can't hear you. X-ray Delta 1, this is Mission Control. 2049er, transmission concluded. There it is. I, uh, yeah, I muted. 
sometimes it's easier when Dale's doing that. That way you don't hear me cough or something. Uh, uh, Dale said you don't have to have a shady background, but if you do, that does make you more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and interesting is always good. But God be with you all. Bless you all. Have a great weekend. Uh, for the LCMS people out there, I hope you all have positive, uplifting uh, conventions like I just came back from and uh, that uh, God would just truly bless you and, and bless our work together. Yep. Hope everybody had a great Trinity Sunday. Um, thankful for our God who loves us in all kinds of different ways um, and has revealed amazing things about himself. And uh, to all a very blessed day and a good week in our Lord.